All right, so it looks like everyone is here on the on the call. I don't have a lot of time. I'm sure they're they're after me right now. They could come in the door at any moment, and then I won't be able to talk with anyone if I'm arrested. So I've selected the four of you for this uh, call for this interview because of your status as um, leaders with integrity as journalists in some cases, um, because I respect each of you. Thank you for joining this call. And I wanted to give you the opportunity to ask any questions you feel like you need to ask, and I will do my best. God is my witness. So help me God to answer you in an orderly and a truthful way. So please um, go ahead and I will Keep it as brief as possible and answer you with integrity. Jonathan, Jonathan this is Catherine Carrera. Can I ask you a question, Jonathan? Why, why did you kill Dr. Collins? Yes, it's true. He's an abortionist. He has murdered children. But Jonathan, Jonathan, why did you kill? Why did you kill Dr. Collins? Jonathan? Are you a Christian? You say you are. And if you are, Jonathan, the word of God tells me that human beings were made like God. So whoever murders one of them will be killed by someone else. Jonathan, why did you kill Dr. Collins? Can you justify yourself, Jonathan? Are you able to live with yourself after knowing that you have killed? Yes, you may have wanted to protect more lives, but Jonathan, taking somebody's life does not protect other lives. You become a murderer. Thank you. Madam Carrera, thank you so much for your heartfelt question. I can tell that it is from the heart. I'm going to answer you as concisely as possible. First, by asking another question, why did Jesus in the Gospel of Luke command his disciples to take a sword. He could have told them to take any other implement, um, but he told them specifically to take a sword. And they said, here we have two swords. He said, it's enough. He said, before I told you to go neither with a scrip nor with purse, but now I'm telling you to take swords. So I ask you rhetorically, why did Jesus ask, in fact, command his disciples to take swords? I contend that it was because even though we do not spread the gospel by means of the sword, the Lord Jesus has not called his men and women to stand idly by while innocent people, including babies about to be aborted, innocent babies made in the image that he was in, in the womb of the Virgin Mary, they deserve to be defended. If that were the case, if that were not the case, rather, why would Jesus have commanded his disciples to bear the sword. Yes, I know. He told Peter, whoever lives by the sword will die by the sword. The mistake that Peter was making was that Jesus had very clearly told his disciples that it was necessary for him to go to Jerusalem and be crucified. And Peter was resisting what Jesus had already said was necessary, that he be sacrificed and delivered to the priests and to the rulers to be put to death. But the reason he told them to take swords is for the same reason that Moses defended the Egyptian. And if you think that's just Old Testament, remember when Moses saw the man who was beating the Egyptian, or rather the Israelite, the Egyptian who was beating the Israelite slave into death, almost beating the poor slave to death. And Moses intervened. Moses didn't intend to kill the man, but Moses had to use force to stop the murder that was taking place. And Moses slew the Egyptian. And if you think that is only Old Testament, why then in the book of Acts does the first martyr, Stephen, in the book of Acts, commend Moses for killing the Egyptian, and he blames the Jews. He tells them, because he told them that even though they claimed to love Moses, that even in the days of Moses, they were just like the people who 
cursed Moses after he killed the Egyptian. My point is that even in the New Testament, the first martyr Stephen affirmed that it was correct for Moses to defend that innocent person who was being murdered. And so I answer you by saying, yes, it is wrong to kill an innocent person, but it is not wrong. In fact, when you go to the original translation of the Ten Commandments, the command is not do not kill. The command is do not do murder because Moses himself killed. Moses commanded the people on more than one occasion to kill. So not all killing is murder. When you kill in obedience to God and in defense of an innocent person who is being murdered, that is the work of God. That is why Jesus commanded his disciples to carry swords. Not to spread the gospel by the sword, but so that when women and children and weak people are being robbed, are being raped, are being put to death, innocent people, they could, in fact, defend them. And the 2,000 years old Christian tradition has maintained, whether it is um, St. Augustine, or whether it is uh, St. Thomas Aquinas in the Ca Roman Catholic tradition, or Martin Luther, John Calvin in the Protestant tradition, or even in the Orthodox tradition, we have affirmed the right of an individual to use up to and including lethal force, if necessary, to defend an innocent person. I contend, Madam Carrera, that I killed Dr. Colin, not out of malice, but out of love for the innocent child, because no one else would protect the baby that Dr. Colin, the abortionist, was killing. Jonathan, you killed a man. My, my first question is, what could have driven you into doing such a heinous act? Thank you, Wavinia. I'm going to be a little bit more aggressive with you because I know you are an aggressive journalist. And so let me just begin. Uh, by saying, I deny that my act was heinous, the act of Dr. Colin in killing a defenseless baby was, in fact, heinous. So he wasn't just some man. Um, <clears throat> please uh, proceed with your questions. Uh, Wavinia, Wanyasa. Well, like every other human being, I am so sure you have some regrets. I mean, was this calculated? And what gave you this drive? What was this that pushed you? Was it Perhaps a voice in your head? Would you say perhaps some psychosis episode? Or what? I knew you would do this. You're, you know, now you're trying to diagnose me with some kind of a, a psychiatric disorder. But in reality, the, the uh, defensibility of my actions, the righteousness of my deed revolves around whether the person I was defending, because Dr. Colin was in fact, according to the Kenyan constitution, killing a person. The Kenyan constitution says, life begins at conception. I wasn't, and Dr. Colin had many opportunities as a medical professional to know exactly what he was doing and to stop. He could have heard the preaching of many pro-life activists. Instead, he persisted in killing defenseless little unborn babies. So no, you can't uh, uh, put any Freudian diagnosis on me. In reality, I was defending a person who deserved a little preborn person who deserved to be defended. Hmm. And you say you were pro-life. That's the part I don't get. Do you consider what you did to Dr. Colin pro-life? He was human. You're here defending a fetus. This was a huge, full human being. Well, on the one hand, I've, I've got to give it to you, uh, Wavinia, for sounding more intelligent than your average um person who would argue against the righteousness of my deeds. But having said that, the word fetus is the Latin word for little one, for a little child. In other words, a little human being. So the fact is that um, according to the, your constitution, you're a Kenyan, I'm an American, right? It is a person with the full rights, all the natural civil rights, the right to a trial, the right to habeas corpus, the right to every right guaranteed in your constitution, including due process, that person was being killed and I used lethal force to kill the person who was killing him. 
or her, and who had in fact in the past not only killed other human beings, but was training other people to um, murder little babies. So uh, your argument sounds intelligent, but does not bear examination. Perhaps you are a radical religious fanatic, because when I look at your Bible, it talks of charity. Where was your charity in this? Well, I'm very glad you brought up that word, charity. In the King James Bible, it's translated charity. In the Greek, it's agape or agape, love. And I think people are, are in fact, I know people are misconstruing it every day. They think that charity only means giving alms, helping poor people, doing nice things, being nice. Sometimes charity is not at all nice. Don't you know that the crucifix, when the Lord Jesus Christ was slain and a person was killed, according to the will of the Father, that he would be sacrificed for our sins. That was agape love, the love of God and charity. And that person, the Lord Jesus Christ, when they brought children before him, his disciples, uh, you may read in the Gospels, were going to send those little children away. Jesus said, Suffer ye the little children to come unto me. Forbid them not, for of such is the kingdom of heaven. You see, Jesus has a special love and protection for the defenseless, for the fatherless, for those little children and widows who are being victimized. And in the same passage, he took one of those children in his lap, we are told, and he said that if anyone causes this little one to stumble, puts a stumbling block or harms or offends one of the little defenseless ones, it would be better for that man, rather than to harm this little one that trusts in Jesus, would be better for that man if a millstone were tied around his neck and he were thrown into the deepest ocean. Now Jesus, who is charity himself, agape love incarnate, made this terrorist threat against anyone who would harm one of his little ones. Jesus didn't say, oh, I'm going to put a millstone around his neck. He said that would be better, implying very clearly that that would be a better fate than what the Lord Jesus Christ will do to that man. And if I'm just a little bit like him, then praise the Lord. But you do agree, William, the fetus was not born. In as much as you're defending and, you know, it was not born. You surely cannot compare a fetus to a whole human being. What's your defense on this? Well, that applies to the Jewish conception of when life begins. They believe that when a baby sucks air, his first breath when he's born, that the life is in the breath and that that's when a person becomes a person. That's not what your constitution says, but even if your constitution said otherwise, the fact is that the Christian tradition, because we believe in the incarnation, meaning that God became man in the womb of the Blessed Virgin Mary, not when he was born, <laughs> but when the Holy Spirit overshadowed her. And we see in the Gospels the little unborn John the Baptist leaping filled with the Holy Spirit, the Holy Ghost, leaping in his mother Elizabeth's womb when he recognized Mary and the unborn Jesus, God unborn in her womb. Both of them persons, the greatest prophet who ever lived, John the Baptist, according to Jesus, the greatest prophet. And up until God himself worshiping, the greatest prophet worshiping, the unborn Jesus. So the Christian view of life is that God creates conceptions and that from that moment of fertilization, when the egg and the sperm meet and the full genetic potential of a unique human being is there, that is a unique person. That baby in the womb not only is a unique person, but is so dignified by God that God himself was not ashamed, the I am, the great I am, was not ashamed to become a baby and pass through all those stages in the womb of a woman. And I'm sure you're now regretting, I mean, authorities are on your case. If, say, we would reverse the clock, 
Would you do the same thing? Would you consider no, no, making I'm, the I'm same not, choice? I'm not regretting. And yes, yes, I would. I would make the same choice again because that. Yes, I'm going to pay a price for it if if I don't get a good trial, or if I get shot before the police arrest me. But the fact is that we have、uh, categorically denied the right to a defense to people that even your constitution says are persons. All right. So I don't. I, I don't regret whatsoever my actions. And you see, Jonathan, if governments. You know, have allowed this. If governments believe that it's a woman's right, if governments believe that doctors who perform abortions should be protected, then don't you think that we should be following what the government says and what no, the constitution no, 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 says? No, 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 Lavinia, not always. Not yes, as a rule of thumb, you obey the government. But sometimes the government gets it really, re- and you know this very well. Really, really. Wrong. All right. I mean, think of all the tens of millions of deaths under Marxism, under communism, or even Nazism in the twentieth century. Okay, most of the people who were killed in history were authorized, innocent people, authorized to be killed by government. It's called democide. All right. So sometimes, as the Psalm says, "Shall the throne of iniquity." Be established before the Lord, which frameth mischief by a law. Sometimes a ruling from a court, or even legislation, or even a constitution can get it wrong. Thank God in Kenya, your constitution clearly, although it's not perfect, clearly recognizes the personhood beginning at fertilization, which is conception. Thank you, Jonathan. Go exhume the body and. Kill it again. I mean it. I'm that serious. Go exhume the body and kill it again. Why would women go around with wombs that can't bear children? Because of such stupid so-called doctors' rupture of the same womb they were born by. Jonathan, go exhume the body and hang it on a tree. I would say it again and again. Again, why would the risk be put on women, our women, for that matter? Why would things be inserted in the cervix just to stop a life of a living creature? We men are allowed to insert inside there biblically. Jonathan, let that so-called Colin have no peace in that grave. Go exhume it. Separate each and every limb and body parts, the way he did it to that innocent infant. Only then will I be contented that what you did to kill Colin was the right thing. Go and exhume the body. I say that again and again. God bless you in the Lord Jesus Christ, Bona Chris. I think they found me, and.、Uh, <sighs> I, I'm gonna have to go.、Uh, oh, sh- I'll see you at the trial. All right, pray for me. And if I've, if I've. FBI, open up! Open up! Open up! Open up! Open up! What's your name? Thanks for calling. Lincoln Two, address is twelve twenty one West Mineral Avenue. Command is at twelve forty one West Mineral Avenue. Next to you, right here. We have the order. Custody. Okay. 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 Okay.